Hello, my name is Nick and I'm a benefits counselor with the Teachers Retirement System. Today we'll be discussing disability benefits that are available to you. If you become ill or injured and are unable to teach, TRS can provide you with a monthly disability benefit while you're unable to work. TRS offers two types of temporary disability benefits. Non-occupational disability benefits are available to an eligible teacher who's unable to work due to an illness or injury, and occupational disability benefits for those whose disability stems from an illness or injury that is directly related to their teaching position. For non-occupational disability benefits, you must meet certain eligibility requirements. You must have at least three years of TRS service credit. You must also have become disabled while teaching or within 90 days of teaching. You must also use all of your accrued sick leave days before TRS can pay you a disability benefit. If you're a part-time or substitute teacher, you're eligible for a disability benefit if you have three years of service credit and have worked as a teacher for at least 340 hours in the current school year or in the previous school year. The disability must have occurred within 90 days of your last day of teaching. No minimum service credit requirements must be met before you're eligible to receive occupational disability benefits. However, you must be working in a TRS-covered position and have been disabled due to a duty-related injury or illness as determined by the Illinois Industrial Commission or your employer's workers' compensation insurance carrier. Regardless of the type of disability benefit that you are applying for, two physicians must certify that you are unable to teach due to the nature of your illness or injury before TRS can pay you a disability benefit. If you are requesting disability benefits because you're pregnant, only one physician certification is required. Your physicians will also need to recertify your disability status each year in order for benefits to continue. If you need to apply for disability benefits, you must make a written request for a disability application packet. This request can be in the form of a letter, email, or fax. Simply state that you would like a disability application packet. Provide a brief explanation as to the type of disability and tell us the date you expect your sick leave to expire. It's best to request the disability packet about three weeks before your sick leave expires. The monetary amount of the non-occupational disability benefit is 40% of your current full-time salary rate. If your salary is $40,000, the disability benefit would be $16,000 per year or just over $1,300 per month. Of course, the exact amount would be based on your own salary at the onset of your disability. For occupational disability benefits, the monetary amount is 60% of your salary rate. This amount is reduced by any workers' compensation that you may receive. While you're receiving a TRS disability benefit, you'll continue to accrue service credit from TRS. The salary rate upon which your disability benefit is based will be recorded as your salary for the years that you're receiving a disability benefit. Once you've been receiving disability benefits for a period of one year, you may return to teaching in a TRS-covered or state university's retirement system covered position on a limited basis with approval from your physicians and from TRS. As part of the limited return to work program, you may not earn more than the difference between your disability benefit and the salary upon which your disability benefit is based. For example, if your salary at the onset of your disability was $40,000 and your disability benefit is $16,000, you may earn up to $24,000 in a TRS-covered or SERS-covered teaching position. While you're receiving a disability benefit, you may also work in a non-teaching position with certain limitations. You cannot earn more than $10,000 per year while working outside of teaching. Exceeding either of these earnings limits could result in cancellation of your disability benefit. Disability benefits can continue until you resume teaching, are able to become gainfully employed, you are no longer disabled, or for non-occupational disability until you've received benefits for a period equal to one-fourth of your TRS service credit. Occupational disability benefits will be paid as long as you remain eligible for the benefit. At any time that you're receiving a disability benefit, you may begin receiving a regular age retirement benefit if you meet the age and service credit requirements. If you're still disabled and have exhausted the time period for non-occupational disability benefits, you may change to a disability retirement annuity. The disability retirement annuity would pay you a minimum of 35% of your annual salary rate. You would stop accruing service credit and you would be considered retired from TRS. Gainful employment limitations change when you move to a disability retirement annuity. You may not earn more than the difference between your disability benefit and the salary upon which your disability benefit is based. As with non-occupational disability, 
You may teach in a TRS-covered position on a limited basis with physician and TRS approval. The same earnings limit applies to limited teaching service while you're receiving a disability retirement annuity. For example, if your last teaching salary was $40,000 per year, your disability retirement annuity is $14,000 per year. You can make up to $26,000 per year in another job, which is the difference between your last teaching salary and your disability retirement annuity benefit. Disability benefits can vary greatly depending on your age, service credit, and salary. It's very important that you contact TRS as soon as possible to determine all of your options. Thank you for joining me today for this presentation about disability benefits that are available to you through TRS.